everyone! Welcome back to another Let's Play of Phoenix Wright Ace Attorney. My name is Anna Mardol. So before we start today, I have a ramble. I know you're all startled and shocked to learn that. I wrote my friend Ben last night after I finished recording the last episode and said, Am I a bad fan if I don't like the Rise from the Ashes episode? Because so far, I do not. He said, no, you're not a bad fan. I love you, Ben. You are the sweetest. He said, no, you're not a bad fan. Um, he, he told me that uh, Rise from the Ashes was added after all the other games were done um, as sort of uh, a, a feature to show off the uh, 3DS... Um, features which is why okay that answers the question of why we've been doing the spray with luminol and the rotate and press and the uh uh the the the, the tapping the uh not luminol what's it called um the powder the aluminum powder and blowing on it all that makes so much more sense when you realize that that was supposed to be a stylus i thought like oh okay i get it now um and so I have thought about it, and I talked about it with Ben, and there are three reasons that I do not like this episode so far. And I'm going to talk about them here, because I want to see if it gets better, and I'm just judging it too early. Reason one is that this feels very different in a mechanical sense from the other four episodes in the other four episodes i don't want to say you had all the evidence at the beginning because obviously there was evidence that came out mid-trial in many cases but the the how, how do i say this there wasn't so much that was just deliberately hid from you in order to to drag out um the uh, the the episode to be as long as humanly possible. Uh, it's really frustrating to me how um, gated off I am from lots of pieces of information that I should have at my disposal. Things like uh, where the detective's car is. Um, how he got to the parking garage. Do we know how he got to the parking garage? Um, things like being able to talk to my client. Things like um, the fact that Edgeworth uh, worked on the SL9 case. And in fact, that that was his first um, uh, 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 case that he did. Those are really important details that are hidden from you, but not in an organic way where it's like... Um, uh, 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 you're discovering it as you go in a way that feels natural. It, it just feels artificially hidden from you to drag out the episode. So I don't like that. Um, that. So mechanically, it feels like a different style of game from the other games, where the other games felt very clean. You were getting the facts. Occasionally, your view of the facts would change a little bit. But it wasn't like... There was just lots and lots of stuff that nobody was telling you for no reason. That that's that's very frustrating and it feels different. So mechanically, it feels like a different game. Um, in terms of the second reason I don't like this story so far is in terms of tone, it feels very fan ficky to me. Um, you know, there's there's the the bringing back all the old characters from all the previous episodes, whether it makes sense or not. Um, old Bag is sending uh, 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 Edgeworth, you know, flowers and cards. The the bellboy is bringing him his tea. There, There's a level at which something feels kind of like it was created by, by fans who wanted to demonstrate that they loved the series and remembered the series um and and that's it, it feels very fanficy in terms of remember this character we do remember this other character we do and in a lot of cases they don't really seem to have any added value except just oh do you remember do you remember and it's like yes i i literally just played that yes 
Um, so that's kind of, eh, I, I don't love that. Um, but even more from the fanfic -y sense, um, it feels like... And this is kind of the third reason I don't like this episode. It feels like a rewriting or a retcon of Edgeworth's history. And it feels very clumsy. Like, it feels like somebody realized um, the, the, the dissonance between we really like this character and this the, the 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 character is very compelling and then suddenly realizing oh crap but he's it's really a problem that he unethically did all these things where he you know falsified evidence and stuff so instead of addressing that in a way where he repents and grows and and changes um it's like they just decided to go back and fix it so it didn't actually happen. Um, I hate that so much. Um, it, it, it feels like an inability to deal with the fact that a favorite did bad things. So instead of accepting that he did bad things and having him do the really hard work to fix it, instead it's just like, oh no, he was totally innocent all along and uh, here's why. Um, it means that Phoenix's whole reason for becoming a defense attorney in order to talk to, to Edgeworth about his unethical behavior is now a lie, which is kind of distressing to me from a character arts arc standpoint. It's like, in order to save Edgeworth um, by making him innocent all along, we completely derailed Phoenix as a, as a character. And honestly, I just don't believe that Von Karma, who was manipulating evidence and who was had taken Edgeworth under his wing in order to set him up for total destruction, shame, and revenge. I cannot believe that Von Karma didn't coax Edgeworth into falsifying evidence a little bit at a time. Von Karma was the final boss, and he was a really good final boss. He was the tempter. He was the devil. He was, you know... The the, the 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 deceiver who uh, deliberately, willfully uh, set out to ruin Edgeworth's life and reputation. I just don't buy that he didn't manage to trick or coax or press. Uh, 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 Edgeworth into compromising himself. You know, a little bit at first and then more and more. Kind of like if you've ever seen um, Devil's Advocate, where it kind of starts out with the devil just sort of, okay, you can walk away, you know, you, you'll lose your case, but but it's fine. If, if you don't want to suborn perjury, you can walk away. I don't I don't care. It's, it's your trial record. And um, the guy's, the lawyer's pride stops him from walking away because he's too proud to do that. And, um, and, and that's the start of his decline into uh, more and more uh, unethical behavior. It starts small, you know. And I can't believe that Von Karma couldn't have figured out how to do that and wouldn't have done that. Um, you know, his whole goal was to turn Edgeworth into the thing his own father despised and then crush him. So I'm suddenly supposed to believe that his mentor, who constantly falsified evidence and who had a very good motive to fault to get him to falsify evidence, that he somehow managed to stay pure in that environment? I don't buy that. I just don't. So and 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 I think So yeah, those are those are kind of the big 3 reasons why I don't like this. Mechanically, it feels like a different game to me. Not a bad game, but a different game. Um tonally, it feels awkward because there's just so many callbacks. Um, even up to it, including Maya and and Mia being here as as Lara or sorry Lana and um, Emma 
uh, which which Phoenix himself pointed out. That's not me saying that. Um, they re those personalities were recycled for this, um, and then just from a in terms of character arc and story perspective, it's ex <clears throat> extremely frustrating to me to see a really good story that I thought was well extremely good to be honest to see it derailed in order to avoid grappling with the implications of the fact that edgeworth as originally written was an uh, had done unethical things um so so i don't like those things and i'm probably unless you know they turn it around and, and change it and we'll see i've been wrong about stuff before unless they turn around and change it I probably will be head cannoning, head cannoning all this as, how do you say, not canon, basically. <laughs> so um, this, this particular episode, if it really was added on after everything else, I may just head cannon it as, that didn't actually happen. So well, like I said, we'll see, we'll see. Um, so wow, that was 11 minutes of me jabbering on. Um, sorry about that. Let us uh, sally forth and play the game. I assume we're going back to court. Um, it, it continues to be a source of major frustration to me that we can't talk to our client. It would, it would be one thing if we tried and she refused to answer or something, but we just literally haven't seen her. And that seems really artificial to me. So what do you think, Mr. Wright? I think the prosecution is as confused as we are. After all, the victim was murdered in two different places at the same time. And a different suspect was arrested at each of the crime scenes. Oh, you did show up. Um... I seem to remember a Law and Order that attempted to do this, and I know Law and Order isn't accurate, I'm not saying it is, but uh, where they tried to argue two different impossible uh, versions of the crime, and uh, it didn't go great, uh, so I, I'm not sure why the prosecution thinks it will go great here. Lorna. Good morning, Mr. Wright. I apologize for yesterday. I was indisposed. I hope I didn't hold you too long for questioning. We just finished, actually. I'm used to all-nighters, though. So how'd it go? What are they questioning her about? I thought we already did the questions. It's as Mr. Wright suspects. The police are clueless. I figured as much, so I struck a plea bargain. A plea bargain? I don't like the sound of that. We agreed that if I told them the truth behind this simultaneous murder, they wouldn't seek capital punishment. That's what I mean, Emma. Lana, don't tell me you... Much to my regret, I'm as much in the dark about this as, I, as they are. So, how did you strike a plea bargain if you don't have the information they want you to give? We found trace evidence of a certain person in the police department's evidence room. They belong to Officer Jake Marshall. What kind of trace evidence? Bloodstained fingerprints, to be exact. That's the trump card I have up my sleeve today. You do understand what this means, don't you? In order to defend my sister, you're going to accuse Mr. Marshall? We have to play the cards we're dealt. Isn't that right, Ms. Skye? Do what you have to do, Mr. Wright. Honestly, being able to point the finger at 
fake LA cowboy is not a huge problem for me, Emma. I know you like him. Court is now in session for the trial of Miss Lana Sky. The defense is ready, Your Honor. I will say, too, that I do not like... Nobody knows what's going on, or even has a coherent theory of the crime, but we're continuing on with the trial? I mean, in the previous episodes, they at least thought they knew what was going on. So that's, that's just kind of further undermines my concerns about this system. The prosecution is... Hmm. Uh, I'm afraid you'll have to clarify. It takes 30 minutes by car to reach the police department from the prosecutor's office. Yet the victim, Bruce Goodman, was slain at both places at the same time. But that's not physically possible, is it? What's more, I hear the victim from the evidence room just disappeared. Yes, and the body eventually reappeared in the trunk of Mr. Edward's car. One of my duties as prosecutor is to present impartial evidence. Today I will present evidence relating to the murder at the police department. In doing so, I believe the way in which we should proceed will reveal itself. But doesn't that waste one of Emma's three days? I mean, we're supposed to be proving that she's innocent and... But okay. Now that's what set, sets Mr. Edgeworth apart. He sounds so on top of things. Even though he doesn't know what's going on himself. That's supposed to be an admirable trait. The, the constant fangirl gushing over Edgeworth is not helping the fanfic tone. And y'all know I love Edgeworth. <laughs> Let the trial resume. On the day of the crime... What exactly transpired at the police department? Mr. Edgeworth, you may call your first witness of the day to the stand. For its first witness, the prosecution calls the suspect of the murder that occurred at the police department. The suspect? You mean the so-called murderer? Does he have representation? He needs representation, and we didn't offer to represent him. What if he says something incriminating? Will the witness please state his name and occupation? Yes, sir. I am Officer Mike Meekins, sir. My occupation is... Well, that would be murderer, sir. Uh, are you telling us you're a professional killer? Sir, it was me, sir. I'm the one who did it. I'll never kill anyone again, sir! Is this guy... Is he supposed to be... Like, developmentally... I, I don't even know the word. Not... Neuroatypical. Is he supposed to be neuroatypical? I'm what you would call part of the younger generation, sir. A person whose actions adults can't possibly comprehend. Please, Mr. Edgeworth, help me. Officer Beacons. Yes, sir. Give us your report of the crime. Consider that an order. Yes, sir, as you wish. I am part of a generation that must be told what to do. 
You can't fault his lack of enthusiasm. I can fault many things about this scene, Emma. Although it's not my normal duty, I was assigned to guard the evidence room that day. I spotted a suspicious man on the security screen and rushed into the room. I was only doing what I was trained to do, sir. I was suddenly attacked. I fought for my life. Then I... I did it. After that, I passed out. Until another officer smacked me awake. So the victim, Detective Goodman, attacked you? Do unto others before they do unto you. That's the Meekins family motto, sir. I see. Then you fainted and a colleague helped you regain consciousness. Yes, sir. He knocked me upside the head, sir. Very well. The defense may begin its cross-examination. And despite the fact that they thought you were guilty, they were still sending you to deliver messages regarding the case, were they? What I need here is more info to work with. I'm just gonna press everything. Although it's not my normal duty, I was assigned to guard the evidence room that day. Oops. Mr. Meekins, you work for the General Affairs Department, do you not? Yes, sir. I am in charge of hiring new recruits, sir. Now there's a scary thought. Evidence transfer was taking place on the day of the crime, which meant many officers were given special tasks not normally performed. How? I I'm honestly asking, how could the officers even help with the evidence transfer since all the lockers are key coded to one person, one fingerprints? I, I don't even understand how you could delegate things in that circumstance. I was in charge of guarding the Blue Badger, sir. The Blue Badger? Yes, sir. The lovely police mascot created by the Chief of Detectives, sir. The Chief of Detectives? I thought it was created by... Well, I was ensure it wasn't broken during the transferal process. That was my sole mission for the day, sir. Okay. I see. It sounds like a very important mission. After the award ceremony finished that day, there were so many people running around that I relocated the blue badger to the evidence room. Oh, so that's why you went to the evidence room. Tell us, what did you see when you got there? I spotted a suspicious man on the security screen and rushed into the room. Wait a second. go in first, and then Bruce Goodman went in. Assuming that's Meekin's number. In order to enter the evidence room, you need an ID card, am I correct? Precisely, sir. I have one right here around my neck. Your ID number should be listed on here, right? There it is! I found it! This is the one right here! 
Could you please read us the number? It's 489596. That's my number, sir. Okay, then everything he described is impossible. I see. But the number 489596 is shown as being used twice. Please explain, witness. It's no real mystery, sir. The first time is when I relocated the blue badger to the evidence room. Oh, okay. And the second time is when I went to go get him after everything settled down. I see. So it was during that second time when... Yes, sir. That was when I spotted the man on the security screen. I don't have all because the 777 is that supposed to be like a test number or something? Hi. So is that the only thing to prep? Okay, sorry. doing what I was trained to do. I was suddenly attacked. So you were attacked. Can you please tell us exactly what happened? It was a knife, sir. A knife. Detective Goodman pulled a knife on you? What happened then? Well, with me charging in on him like that, he looked as surprised as I was. You aren't exactly the kind of person someone would want to run into. That's what I reacted, sir. I swung my arms like an octopus, struggling to detain him. That's how I got this gash on my hand. Maybe if you kept your cool, your hand wouldn't be cut. When I saw the blood trickling down my arm, I panicked. I grabbed the man by his collar. So he bled on the crime scene, but it wasn't his fingerprints we found. What exactly do you mean when you said you did it? I know I don't look the type, but I'm really into kung fu films, sir. The man let his guard down for just an instant. So I snatched the knife from him. You took his knife. I swung around, I swung him around and performed a disarming maneuver. I made sure to close my eyes like a man. I see. The next thing I knew, his white coat was drenched in a sea of my blood. And then, the next thing I knew, yes, he punched me right in my face, sir. After that, I passed out. About what time did you regain consciousness? No offense, sir, but how am I supposed to know that? I was unconscious. You could have checked a clock? According to the report from the officer that woke up the witness, it was about 5.30. He hit me right in the head, too! I woke up crying tears of pain! That's nice. I mean, that's that you recovered. When I came around, though, I made sure to finish my mission. Your mission? Yes, sir. The Blue Badger, sir. I returned him to the entrance before things got out of hand. Well, we can all rest easy about that. 
I believe we now have a fairly accurate picture of what happened. Yes, Your Honor. Only one thing remains unclear. Was the man this officer murdered really the victim? That's what I've been wondering. Because all we really have is that... We have that his hand was in the room. So that's something. He's got a point. Uh, yes, Officer Meekins. With regard to that, sir. Take a look at this. It was sent to my jail cell. Chief Gant delivered it to me just this morning. What? The chief? Delivered it? What is that? A videotape? Yes, sir. That's absolutely right, sir. A videotape. It contains footage from the security camera in the evidence room. Objection! What? I, sus I specifically asked if there was such a tape and was told it had been mistakenly erased. Quite a mistake. I just do what I'm told, sir. It's the only thing I'm really good at. Oh, honey, you're not even good at that. Looks like communication with the police department is as good as ever. Well, let's have a look. Show us the video of you murdering the victim. Please stop using that word, murder, sir. Murder scares me. A video of a real murder. Just what are we getting ourselves into? French coat walked by. Did that glove fall from his hand or from the... Yeah, that's kind of my feeling, too. Well, I believe we're all thinking the same thing. How can we deal with these unsettling feelings stirred within us? What the hell was that wriggling piece of plywood? Sir, that is the pride and joy of the entire criminal affairs department. It's the blue badger, sir. Why am I not surprised this isn't going smoothly? Anyway, 
The tape seems to prove that the witness did encounter someone in the evidence room, and some sort of activity took place. Your Honor, instead of relying on clearly incom incomplete footage, the witness's testimony will suffice. Is that all right with you, Officer Meekins? Yes, sir, as you wish, sir. wasn't Goodman. And here's why. I think the reason the guy reacted the way he did, slashing with a knife, wasn't because he was startled, but because he needed nobody to see his face. But... I don't know. His face can't be clearly seen in the video, but there's no question that the other person was Detective Goodman, sir. I mean, he opened the locker, which required Detective Goodman's fingerprint to do. But I think he had a glove on, or a glove with him, which could have had the fingerprint on it somehow. Like, uh, maybe it wasn't a glove, maybe it was a print of Goodman's hand. The locker he opened is unquestionably Detective Goodman's locker. So it must be him! No one else could have unlocked it! What's this about a fingerprint? Each detective has been given a locker equipped with a fingerprint activated lock. These locks ensure that each locker can only be opened by the detective it belongs to. Intriguing. That would mean the victim at the crime scene would have to have been Detective Goodman. Very well. The defense may begin its cross-examination. Tell me, were you able to get a good look at him? At the face of the man who attacked you with a knife. Sir, if you must label people as having seen or not seen the man's face, then I believe I would be classified as the latter? The latter? But you were standing right in front of him, were you not? More to the point, you are the person who fought him, aren't you? Oh yes, sir! But I didn't get a clear look at his face, sir. I will give him a pass on that, because if somebody was waving a knife at me, I would be looking at the knife and not the face. I'm not the kind of person who talk looks directly at people when talking with them. Okay, so you're autistic like me, probably. I'm sure it was him. I bet my badge on it. But you don't know for sure, do you? You never actually saw Detective Goodman's face. Well, I suppose you might say that. 
since his face can't be identified in the video. Only you can verify it. Why is everyone looking at me? If I had to label your stares as disturbing or... Meekins. Having been shown a questionable video at best, we are not in the best of moods. Please be more certain when you testify. Yes, sir. You claim the man who brandished a knife on you was Bruce Goodman. Tell us why you were so positive it was him. About these lockers, is there no other way to open them? No, sir. I myself tried all kinds of methods in the past. They only respond to registered fingerprints, sir. And there's no override. What happens if, a, if an officer is kidnapped or killed? I wonder what kind of methods he's tried. If the man opened the locker's lock, which only responds to registered fingerprints, then he must be the person the locker was assigned to. Exactly my point, sir. How do you know that information? I heard rumors, sir, from people in the know, sir. People in the know? The workers in the department cafeteria, sir, they keep me informed. They also listen to my romantic troubles, sir. For the record, the open locker did belong to Detective Goodman. I verified the information through a more reliable source. Hmm. So the victim opened the locker with his own fingerprint. The most important detail is not shown in this video. The man's face. Sir, if I may say something, sir. Please do. After all, you are the one being examined. I don't understand why the man's face is so important in this case, sir. I mean, it was his hand that opened the fingerprint lock. And it was his hand that tried to thrust his knife into my body, sir. My unsettled state can testify enough to this. You have a point. Unless the defense can find a problem with this video? Mr. Wright, let's check the court record again! Sure, yes, there's a problem. Regarding the video contained on this tape, there is one thing in particular that seems rather strange. This contradiction leads to the possibility that the man may not have been the Detective Goodman. What? This video contains such a contradiction? Objection! Interesting. Your Honor, I have a proposal. Yes, Mr. Edgeworth? I propose we have the defense point out to us this alleged contradiction. He would want me to point it out. I mean, yes, that's, that's your job. Proposal accepted. Let us further examine this piece of evidence. I will now play the security tape. Mr. Wright, please show us the contradiction you speak of. You can do it, Mr. Wright. It's set up so you can fast forward, rewind, or pause the video. Just take a good look and be sure to point out the right thing. Please don't play it too many times. I can't stand watching the video. Where is the contradiction? Okay, let's pause backspace.
The thing that's strange about this video has got to be this. Officer Meekins. Sir, do you mean me, sir? You're the only Meekins here. As I understand it, the locker apparatus looks like this. When you grab a handle, a sensor reads your fingerprint. If it's a match, the light turns on and the lock is released. According to my very limited experience, that's the way I understand it, sir. If so, then something is seriously wrong in this picture. The light's already on. How did they manage that? When the victim reaches for the handle to open the locker, let's rewind to a little earlier. Here, notice the light? What's this? It's already lit? Precisely my point, Your Honor. The locker was already open before the victim grabbed the handle. Order! Order! What's the meaning of this? It's very simple, Your Honor. The locker wasn't locked on the day of the crime. But the locker locks are controlled by an electronic system. When the door is shut, a sensor is triggered. And the locker is automatically locked. Oh, I know. It must have broken down. Of course, I'm not an expert. That's not likely, Your Honor. The sensor would detect and report a malfunction. Oh well, it just goes to show novices should keep their mouths shut. So then, Mr. Wright, do you have an explanation? Me, Your Honor? Yes. Why wasn't the locker locked? Yes, well, you see, this isn't exactly my field. What do you think, Miss Scientific Investigator? Uh... Maybe something jammed the system's sensor? There's got to be another clue somewhere in this footage. Very well. Let's inspect the video once more. The locker wasn't locked. Mr. Wright, please point out the cause for this. So it fell out. That. Maybe that was what was blocking the sensor? Please watch closely. This is the continuation of the part I showed you earlier. What's this? Something white fell out of the locker. But sir, it's been my experience that things fall out when doors are opened. 
I often fall out and roll great dis- yes. Yeah, just... We can't be sure that the item was completely inside the locker to begin with. What do you mean? The sensor triggers the lock when the door is shut. What if something was inserted between the sensor and the door? Inserted? This white thing wasn't inside the locker. It was stuck between the door and the sensor. Oh, I understand now, sir. It's just like my tie. Two out of three times it gets stuck in the door when I get out of my patrol vehicle, sir. I like that they're just ignoring him. I like less that he was written. There's a there's a review that I heard once, and I, I'm gonna try to recreate it here. But it was that um, developers need to be reminded that deliberately annoying characters are still annoying. The object would have to be extremely fit thin to fit in the door. Not only that, but it would have to block electrical currents. It would need to be an insulator. Yes, an insulator. But at the crime scene, there just might have been something that fits the description. But sir, by insulator you don't mean... I think I finally got this figured out. Very well. Will the defense present relevant evidence? What was the insulator that was stuck in the locked door? Well, it was this rubber glove. Which I don't think that we actually examined. The tag says SL9. That was super useful, thanks, babe. Take that! I found this near the locker a thin rubber glove. But we can't be sure that was in the victim's locker. Oh, come on! It has a tag that says SL9 incident, and now you're just being stupid. The video seems to depict the victim opening the locker. But that isn't the case. The lit lamp attests to this. On the day of the crime, even I could have opened that locker. Is this not so, Officer Meekins? It would appear so, sir! Why are you asking him? Order! Order! So are we to believe that the victim, whom this witness stabbed in the evidence room, was not Detective Goodman? Do not be misled, Your Honor. What do you mean, Mr. Edgeworth? The defense has merely demonstrated that possibility. Nothing more. The victim in the video was indeed Bruce Goodman. I'm trying to help you, buddy. The prosecution will offer one more testimony to prove this. What? Officer Meekins, please testify about this. Sir? Me, sir? I'm not sure what you're referring to, sir. Mm. 
You mean that, sir? Of course, sir. Is this a joke? That's what I want to know, too. Hey, baby. Who's a good boy? Are you a good boy? Do you want kisses? Do you want kisses? You deserve kisses. Okay. <sighs> Very well. Begin your testimony. There's one other thing that proves the man was Detective Goodman, sir. To enter the evidence room, one must use her ID card. When there's an ID card used, there's a record of it. At the time of the crime, the detective used his ID card. An ID card record, I see. And I have the ID card record right here, Your Honor. So do we, you're not special. The ID used at 514 is that of the victim. Just before the crime. This is the victim's ID. However, one thing to strike me as usual. Several hundred cases should have been due for transferal. Why were there so few people using this room? That is a good question. This particular evidence room is only used for storing certain special cases. What? Why is this the first we're hearing of this? This is what I'm talking about! Why is this the first we're hearing about this? Extremely violent cases involving police staff. That seems kind of fucking important! Sorry. I'm sorry, baby. Just hearing that makes my hair stand on end. Me too, although I suppose it doesn't make much of a difference. There were only a few cases up for transferal there, and most were cleared up by noon. Right, I see. Now let us move on to the cross-examination. Say, Edgeworth, fuck you for not telling us that earlier. Kind of fucking important. Hold it. So, unlike your earlier testimony, you believe this to be rock solid, do you? Yes, sir. Solid as stone, sir. If my hand wasn't wrapped in bandages, I'd even give the V for victory sign, sir. Let's hear him out fully. As we've seen, one never, one never knows what he might say until the very last second. Is that card hanging from your neck one of these ID cards? Yes, sir! This card right next to my cuff, sir! I keep it here so I won't ever forget it! What if someone were to steal it from you, keeping it out in the open like that? Maybe I shouldn't wear it around my neck. Remember when I said two out of three times my tie gets stuck when I get out of my car? The remaining time, my ID card is what gets stuck. At any rate, each police officer has only one ID. Both the police department and the prosecutor's office can attest to this. Please proceed with your testimony. Let it be noted that this is the record the witness referred to. Let me see. Yes, that would be it. Detective Goodman. What's the matter? According to this, Mr. Edgeworth, your name is on here. So it is, Your Honor. I work in the freaking department. Thanks for noticing. Hey, maybe he's behind this after all. Grumble, 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 grumble. Grumble, grumble, grumble. Continue to grumble. It would seem... The Inquiry Committee will want to speak with you again today. For what? 
You're not allowed to go in the evidence room if there's a murder there later? I broke that rule, you're right, sir. It got me dead to rights there. I have nothing to be ashamed of regarding my actions or their consequences. For now, let us continue with the cross-examination. Poor Mr. Edward, it must be so difficult for him. Is this what I mean by fanfic -y? Like... It's, it's critical that he was set up to be the, the criminal. That's important. But for the judge to be like, Oh, clearly you're gonna be in trouble for having gone in there. That makes no sense. So it just feels like he's being, like, persecuted because he's just so awesome and nobody can deal with it so they're all jealous? Like, what? Earlier, I believe you testified that when you asked the man to show his ID card, he pulled a knife on you. Yes, sir! He didn't show me any card, sir! Don't you think that's odd? I mean, if he had his ID card... All he had to do was show it to you. There wouldn't be any reason to draw a knife. Maybe he just panicked? Everything stems from this contradiction. Let's point them out. Mr. Wright, what do you think? I'm confused. What? The problem with this ID card testimony is it's far too obvious. It's not like Edgeworth to miss something like this. You're thinking too hard about it! Come on, let's show them what we got! It's 5-8. He wrote his ID wrong and scratched it out. He didn't have his ID with him. He lost it. He was filling this out because he lost his ID. And he didn't know his ID number by heart to fill it in. Wait one moment, Officer Meekins. I'm not good at waiting, sir. I have the victim's ID card right here. I found it at the crime scene. That makes sense. When I say crime scene, I'm not referring to the evidence room at the police department. I mean the other crime scene. The officer's underground parking lot at the prosecutor's office. Your Honor, I have one more piece of evidence to present. 
It's a very important clue regarding the victim's ID card. A lost item report? It's only half completed. But it shows that Detective Goodman had lost something on the day of the crime. Something important enough to fill out this report. Let me guess. You believe this something to be his ID card. I can't say for sure, but there is a high probability. On the day of the crime, Detective Goodman was not carrying his card. What does this all mean? It can only mean one thing, and it doesn't require much thought. The man Officer Meekin encountered in the evidence room was not Detective Goodman, but the man who stole his ID card. Does the prosecution have a response? I have only one thing to say to the defense. Bravo, Mr. Wright. Aww. Bravo? Allow me to summarize the defense's argument. At 5.15, on the day of the crime, the man in the evidence room Officer Meekins encountered was not Detective Goodman. There are two grounds to support this. First, the locker in the evidence room was already unlocked. Second, the victim lost his ID card. Am I correct so far, Mr. Wright? Yes. What's he up to? Can't he just be nice? That being the case, we must inevitably arrive at a single conclusion. If the victim in this video is a fake, then the murder in the evidence room is also fake. In other words, the security camera does not show the instant of the murder. That is... well, I guess that's right. Is something wrong, Mr. Wright? Only moments ago, you seemed content to point your finger around. This isn't going to end well. Well, well, it seems you've finally realized exactly what you've gone to such lengths to prove. Explain yourself, Mr. Edgeworth. The defense has already done the explaining for me. The victim in this video is a fake, which means a murder did not take place at the police department at 5.15 on the day of the crime. So... So the real crime could only take place at one location, the underground parking lot at the prosecutor's office. The murderer being Ms. Lana Sky, the defendant. The evidence is compelling. A trustworthy witness. Who perjured herself like eight times? No! Observed the moment the defendant used the murder weapon! I mean, this is why I didn't feel like the Meekin stuff was fair since Alana only gets three days to, to, to clear herself. I knew that testimony was way too shabby. It was all a trap from the beginning. The activity in the evidence room still leaves many questions unanswered. Who exactly was the victim Officer Meekins encountered? And where did this person disappear to? However, the trial's purpose is to examine only the murder of Detective Goodman. Just so, Your Honor. Mr. Wright! You have to do something or else Lana... 
What do I do? How am I supposed to get myself out of this mess? Well, obviously we object. I mean, they've got to be related. One moment, your honor. What now, Mr. Wright? Don't tell me you're objecting to what you've just proven. Of course not. But I almost walked right into the prosecution's trap. What are you talking about? This cross-examination has proven one thing and one thing only. The security video did not show the actual murder. However, it cannot be said that it is unrelated to the murder in the parking lot. Specifically, large amounts of blood traces were found in the evidence room. Plus, the ID card would have had to move from one spot to the other. The defense demands further examination of the truth in the matter. Mr. Edgeworth? Yes, Your Honor. If this court were to examine this further, other witnesses would be necessary. Is the prosecution prepared? I'm sorry, Your Honor. The prosecution considered the incident at the police department to be unrelated. What? No, you didn't! Not until five minutes ago! We have not prepared any other witnesses for this incident. It makes no sense! Time to call a certain Texas Ranger to the stand! He's not Texan! Stop saying that! Your Honor, the defense would like to request a specific witness. Whom did you have in mind? Someone we have reason to believe knows the truth. The truth behind the activities that took place in the evidence room. The prosecution requests to hear this person's name before deciding whether or not to comply. The prosecution doesn't get to decide whether to comply! Very well then, Mr. Wright. This person, with whom you would have testify, what is his or her name? Oh, that's kind of cool. They give us the profiles that we almost never use rather than three choices. Officer Jake Marshall. Why him? I can't let Edgeworth know everything just yet. He's in charge of the evidence room. I feel we should hear what he has to say. The prosecution agrees to the defense's request. Since he was responsible for guarding the room, we should hear his testimony. Fortunately, he works in the police department. We shouldn't need any longer than 20 minutes to prepare. Y'all... Y'all realize that, like, the pursuit of justice sometimes takes time and that's okay? Very well. The court will take 30 minutes while the witness is subpoenaed. Will the prosecution please prepare the witness during this time? We will, Your Honor. Court is now in recess. There's no stopping you, is there, Mr. Wright? What do you mean? You called for Jake Marshall. It seems you've figured everything out. Uh... 
Shauna. You're the one who knows everything. Emma. You always know everything. Why don't you just tell us? Mr. Wright is trying his hardest to protect you. I... I don't recall ever asking for his protection. How can you be so cold? Don't you trust us? Don't you trust me? Hope I'm not interrupted anything, pals. Oh, I guess I am. I'll come back later. Wait, Detective Gumshoe, what is it? You've got a lot of nerve, pal. Making a detective run all around while on duty. And to top it all off, you call me here. I've seen happier people at funerals. Sorry, detective. You better be, pal. I didn't see you there, Chief Prosecutor Sky. That's okay. So, have you brought what I asked? You mean this, right? My apologies, Detective. Due to my present circumstances, I was forced to use Mr. Wright's name when making my request. My name? Never in a million years would I have thought it was you who asked me. Could I bother you to bring me the SL9 incident files? I'll need them by noon. Talk about crazy. Lana, that's... I thought Mr. Wright might need them, so I had them brought here. You might do well to read them. I can't believe you, the Chief Prosecutor, were a witness in that case. Miss Sky was a witness? The Joe Dark killing, solved two years ago. Take it from me, you don't want to do anything with ser you don't want anything to do with serial murders. Edward Jones, Edith Kirby, Jeb Bates, Jason Knight, Rachel Moss, Neil Marshall, Marshall? Lana and Emma were at witnesses on this? And Emma has never once mentioned this in all the time we've run across SL9 stuff? This is getting really incestuous. Everyone in this case was also somehow also... In the other case, was the bellboy a witness? And Bruce was the only one who stayed on the force without a demotion, but he just got killed. And we get no details at all, so great files, wow. Now that I brought you your stuff, you're just gonna ignore me? Emma, but why? Why is your name in here? My name's in there? I don't know. Lana, the SL9 incident, is that? That's the classification number the police filed it under. Two years ago, the rest of the world knew it as the Joe Dark killings. The Joe Dark? No, Lana! That's over with! No! Emma ran away. 
You know what? I just remembered. I, I gotta be somewhere else. Sorry, pal, but I'm out of here. Thanks so much. Everyone involved in this case is connected to the killings two years ago. Literally everyone. It's amazing. It almost seems impossible and contrived. This can't just be a coincidence. It has to be contrived and badly written. Knowing you, you just might be able to figure it out. There's no need to help me or give me any hints. It's not like you're going to get killed over it. Time to get back to the trial, Mr. Wright. Best of luck. You know what, Lana? I'm going to be honest. I don't care if they electrocute you or give you the chair or whatever. I, I don't. You have given me literally no reason to care. I don't know you as a person. You don't seem to give a shit about your own defense. You don't seem to give a shit that there's something shady going on and somebody's being framed. Whether it be you or Miles or whatever. I, I have literally no interest in this because you're being an obstructive asshole be for no reason. But because I guess there wouldn't be a game if you came right out and told me what was going on. Um, so since you don't seem to take your defense seriously, I don't particularly take it seriously either. Uh, I'll do this for Emma, I guess. Um... And because I give a damn about, uh, how do you say, corruption in the police department. Uh, I care about that. Uh, but as, as far as keeping you out of the electric chair, uh, Lana, I honestly just don't care. Uh, except, you know, in as much as nobody should be illegally executed, but... Um, you're giving me nothing to work with. And I, I can't, I cannot see a reason for it. Except that I guess you feel like it should be a challenge. And I guess it was one thing when it was just your ass on the line, but now Officer Meekins is being framed for something he didn't commit, and you're still just... Don't care? I, give me something, woman. Anything. Uh, so that was the day three of the trial, apparently. I have, I guess, in a, the next video we'll go into more of day three and um, quiz Marshall. Uh, once again, I, I cannot help but feel like that was really artificially drawn out. Um... Uh, the, 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 the things that were important was the video evidence of the crime. And using the video evidence to demonstrate that the man in the room was not Goodman. Um, but even that was kind of frustrating because I thought there was going to be a pop-up for demonstrating that the crimes were still connected, and I was going to point out that, well, obviously the crimes have to still be connected because uh, the ID card got from one scene of the crime to the other scene of the crime, but uh, I didn't even get a pop-up for that. So, <laughs> um, and we figured out that Officer Goodman... was probably not 
even at the crime scene, the evidence scene. Which really makes me wonder where he was. They couldn't kill him too far in advance of framing Miles because the autopsy would have shown if he was dead for longer than he should have been. But I don't I don't know where he was if he wasn't in the evidence room. I don't know. I reckon we will find out. Uh, so that was, uh, that was another episode of AIDS Attorney, Phoenix Wright. Uh, my name is Anna Mardal. Still very confused, but we're getting there. Uh, but yeah, I, 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 I'm very frustrated with this episode. It, it does very much feel like something that was made after everything else was said and done as far as games and lore. And it feels, it feels like a fan game. Like, and, and I don't mean that as a as an automatic pejorative, there's a lot of fan great games that are awesome, but it feels like a bad fan game. Um, like a bunch of fans of the series got together and just wanted to throw all the old characters into it and, and have them do slapstick and comedy. And if it doesn't fit the scene or if it makes it draw out long or whatever, then, oh, well, you know, and it's like, ah, so so it, it feels like it's making everything take about three times longer than it should. So, um, But we will get to the end eventually. There must be an end, right? I would think so. So um, I will see you in the next video. Bye-bye.